Uh, I mentioned this morning that we started this journey four years ago, so, uh, and our funding cycle is four years, plus if we are lucky, three more years uh, of renewal funding. So what I'd like to do with you for the next uh, 20, 25 minutes is to uh, give you an overview of what we did for the past four years, what we think are achievements, uh, and then to let you know what we plan to do for the next three years. So, just an opportunity to uh, introduce uh, Bob Squarepants in the cybersecurity conference. Um, why we created um, Serene Risk and why we uh, chose this uh, acronym of Serene uh, for Smart Cybersecurity Network is we wanted to move beyond the knee jerk reaction to cybersecurity risks and threats which is to be really afraid and desperate about the future and to move on to something a bit more empowering and to uh, try to find out where we could find synergies between the uh, public agencies and the private sector and academia to try to uh, provide evidence-based solutions to governments and companies and end users about how to better protect themselves and how to fix the uh, cybersecurity uh, challenges and issues. So we created this network. We started with a, a limited number of partners, eight institutional partners uh, four years ago. And now I think we've grown to uh, 33 institutional partners from industry. And you see that we have uh, startups and very small companies, um, uh, SMEs. And we've also got very large companies like uh, Bell and uh, CGI and Symantec. We've got, uh, of course, uh, government partners from the three levels of government, the federal government, from intelligence, uh, but also industry. Um, we've got the provincial level with uh, OPP and Sûreté du Québec. Um, and we've also got now more and more municipal government partners as big cities like Montreal, uh, Toronto and Vancouver are moving to a smart cities uh, model then they realize that cybersecurity is not a national security problem anymore, it's also an urban security problem. So we have this wonderful group of partners that have supported us uh, from the beginning. And we also have nonprofits. And we are a small team of uh, full, uh, four full-time employees, plus uh, Sonia and I as academics, but that's only one third of our job. Uh, to look after the network. Uh, so we, our model is to reach out to professional associations and to NGOs and to groups that have a massive membership and to use them as conduits for our, uh, the contents we produce so that we identified our niche as uh, a networking and uh, content production uh, network. And then we partner with other networks and other groups uh, who are in a better position to disseminate the information and the awareness campaigns that we're producing. We've also been very lucky to be able to attract a growing uh, group number of academics from both computer science and the social sciences. And Serene Risk is unique. We've got 41 academics from 23 universities and colleges. So to our knowledge, uh, and of course, we built on ISNET, which was a, a network um, that existed before us. Uh, but to, uh, to, to our knowledge, that's unique to have such a large group of academics from both the technical side and the behavioral side, because cybersecurity is not only a technical problem, it's also a social and a policy and a behavioral problem. And we really need to engage the sociologists and the criminologists, the lawyers, uh, the political scientists, I'm very glad we have a couple of uh, posters from political science students today to understand the problem at different scales and how we can address this problem by using these complementary forms of expertise. Um, and also we have representation from coast to coast. So we're not a central Canada network uh, focused around Ontario and Quebec. We all also have uh, partners in universities, in, in the Maritimes, uh, and out uh, to, uh, to BC as well, so we, uh, to British Columbia as well. So we really have a nice representation of a, a very powerful group of academics doing cutting edge research in cybersecurity. Of course, we have a wonderful uh, group of uh, full-time employees. Uh, and I'd like 
because he's attended every single workshop from the beginning and we rarely mention him, but I like uh, Jim uh, to stand up, please. He's the chair of our board. And, uh, and Jim has been instrumental in the success of Syrian Risk when we started it and I kind of submitted the grant application. I had no idea how to run such a network. And from the beginning, he was very helpful and uh, very generous of, of his advice. And I think we wouldn't be such a successful uh, network if it wasn't for him. So I'd really like uh, to, uh, to thank him for that. And of course, we have a wonderful team of uh, uh, Shirley McKee and uh, Michael Joyce and Charles Godreau and Fisilia, uh, uh, she's in the front, and Shannon in the back somewhere. So we have this wonderful team of very dedicated and passionate people. And I'm not mentioning all the students by name, but all the students are also very um, uh, instrumental in our success at every event and every single activity that we are undertaking. Uh, that's not a good presentation, so I'll skip that one, but one, well, actually not, it's a funny one. Uh, the way that we people have been doing knowledge mobilization, because that's what we are about, to let uh, end users and government and corporations use the knowledge produced in academia the classical model of academics doing knowledge mobilization is the Indiana Jones model, where you find a, a scientific result and then you publish it in a paper that's read by about five or six people and that's it, you move on to something else. And the way we wanted to do it is a bit more dynamic and a bit more exciting for end users and to kind of really engage uh, with end users and to make sure that they get the content in a format that's a bit more attractive and it's a bit more palatable uh, for them. We have six key activities. I'm not gonna go into uh, too much detail about every single activity, but I'll just um, say a few things about each one of them. So of, of course, we have the workshops. That's the eighth workshop. This is the place where we can all meet in the flesh, where uh, the people from government agencies can meet um, entrepreneurs and academics and maybe uh, cook up some new projects and find ideas and, and projects that they'd like to invest in or um, research questions that they're fielding to the researchers that get them thinking and get their students excited about doing something new that's going to be of use to the uh, practitioners. So the workshops are really uh, a key component of our activities. We also have Connect, which is our online knowledge sharing platform, which used to be on a closed platform, so only the members of uh, full-fledged members of the network had access to it. It was limited to 300 users. And now, since a few months ago, since early August, we're uh, transitioning to an open access platform. Uh, it's going to be by invitation, but if you attend the workshop, then give us your uh, business card and we'll enroll you. And this open platform will be leveraging the social media tools of LinkedIn and Twitter and YouTube to really get the message across in a, at a much larger scale. So we're not going to be limited anymore to 300 users. We'd like to go to 3,000, maybe 30,000 users all across Canada to really get the conversation going and to scale. So the presentations, if you can't come to the workshop, well, you'll find them on Connect. The interesting papers from our researchers if you don't have access to the, uh, the you know, paywalls behind which some of the scientific journals um, hide the papers that you have to pay like 35 bucks per paper to have access to if you're not uh, working in a university, well, you, it will give you a way to access the summaries of those papers and, and ways to contact the researchers so that you can access those papers. So the Connect platform is an online, it's an extension of the workshop, it's an online uh, knowledge uh, sharing platform. We also have the cybersecurity digests, and we're going to be pro promoting them more and more. They are one-page summaries of the most recent research papers that have been published in cybersecurity that are immediately applicable by practitioners and policymakers. So usually it takes about between five and ten years for a research paper to find its audience outside of academia. We are looking to accelerate, to decrease that amount of time, and we are putting out every trimester uh, a, a, a digest of about 10 summaries of very recent research papers that are summarized in, in common terms um, that can really give you an idea of, 
what is useful in that paper for someone who's in the front line of cybersecurity and what kind of evidence it gives you that will allow you to make informed decisions, not on kind of hype or myth, but on uh, scientific evidence. We also have the professional development activities. We've run about 13 or 14 of those professional development activities for uh, students, HQPs, uh, in academic lingo and, um, and early career professionals. We've uh, probably uh, interacted with 300 students and one of our success stories is Masara. I don't know if Masara is in the room today. No? Well, she's a former criminology student and now she's participating to the Geek Week uh, event at CSIRC. Um, so she's a criminology student and she got in touch with Pascal Fortin from Go Secure at one of our early events. And then she told him she wanted to really learn about uh, how to code. So she went with a MyTax internship uh, grant to, uh, for three months at GoSecure and ported her social science skills uh, and learned how to code and worked with the uh, uh, malware researchers at GoSecure. And her work was of such significance that she was awarded a um, uh, Young Innovator Award by MyTax and she received the prize from the hands of Minister Kirsty Duncan. So this is the kind of um, mix we'd like to create, matchmaking between, you know, let's say social science students, a cybersecurity company doing research that has applications for the whole of the Canadian cybersecurity community. It could work the other way around. A technical student going into a, a government agency and doing some fantastic work automating certain processes that will facilitate the work of that agency. So we're really trying to enhance also that kind of um, uh, opportunities for students and employers to meet the workforce of tomorrow. The brokerage activities, we organize events. We don't always have only, we, we don't only have the workshops in Ottawa. We also organize luncheons in uh, other cybersecurity hubs in Canada. We went to uh, Victoria, Vancouver, um, Kingston, uh, Otto, uh, Toronto, Montreal, um, Fredericton, and other places. So we try to engage with local communities, and you'll see that that's something we want to do a bit more of. And finally, the public awareness campaign. We launched a program which we're very proud of, and Sonia, we always use your picture. Uh, uh, it's called uh, cybersec101.ca. It's a C and not an X, but we register the X anyway. Um, which is a, a public awareness campaign that's being delivered. So that's an example of how we do this kind of uh, joint uh, partnerships to deliver at scale. So we produce the content of 10 training modules in cybersecurity, and we're not delivering it. We are working with public libraries all across the country to deliver uh, this cybersecurity training. And half of the Canadian population visits a, li a public library every year. So, and librarians are very curious people, very um, uh, technology friendly. They know that technology is their future instead of their demise. So they really want also to facilitate this, time of, this type of teaching. And they've been very helpful and potentially we've been in, uh, working with uh, 20 library networks all across the country with the potential to reach about 4 million users to receive this type, kind of training. And you can also uh, visit the website and um, follow the training by yourself. And now SMEs and companies are coming to us and saying, well, can we use your content to train our employees? So Reitman's uh, retail company is using it. Uh, other groups, uh, insurance brokers are using it more and more. So we're looking to expand that offering as well. And if you have a company that you think might be interested, come and talk to us. We're very open about that. That's a commentary from one of our, uh, probably the foremost, one of the two foremost knowledge mobilization experts in, in Canada, uh, reflecting on how um, interesting he thinks this uh, cyber awareness campaign is and the way it's being delivered, uh, how it's producing a scalable um, outcomes and impact. So in terms of the spread of our activities, uh, the pins represent all the places where we've been able to deliver uh, a serene risk activity, whether it's been uh, workshops, whether it's been 
uh, working with a local library, um, organizing a partnership event, uh, organizing a, a student uh, professional development event. And, and you'll see that we really try to, with a small team of four people, to have a national presence and to make sure that we try to, to be represented in every single province. And we even are very proud to have one library in Iqaluit uh, that, you know, in Nunavut, that's working with us. So we're trying to cover really, really uh, as broadly as we can, but of course, you know, with the limited resources that we've got. In terms of measuring outcomes, we define ourselves as a network of networks. So we try to map from the very beginning the, the connections, the, uh, the linkages that we managed to establish, and I'm afraid we don't see the lines very well, um, you, so you'll have to trust me. So that's what the network looked at the beginning, that's what it's looking like in year two, and that's year three, and you see as the year goes on, the years go on, that we have more and more actors connected across uh, different silos, and we're really able <coughs> to enhance the linkages and the partnerships between different types of institutions. Yes, there are many opportunities for the private sector to attend many cybersecurity conferences. There are probably one a day these days in Canada. The same for government, the same for academia. But we think that we're unique in the sense that we allow people from very different uh, uh, groups and worlds to meet and exchange and to kind of create uh, new synergies and new opportunities. So we, we try to measure as, as best as we can. And so from, from 24 members and 64 linkages, we ramped up to 73 members and almost uh, 260 ties. And just the workshops have created, we think, uh, with a certain level of reliability, more than 3,000 connections that didn't exist before. So that's how we are trying to measure the impact of what we're doing. As I mentioned, we see ourselves as a network of networks, and that's, th these are all the partners with whom we engage on a daily basis to deliver our activities, to support uh, conferences by providing academic uh, presenters, researchers from different fields, by delivering certain programs, by connecting students with uh, funding opportunities, and so on and, and so forth. And we also produce uh, um, reports or products that help our members reach out uh, certain resources. So we have a database of the 250 cybersecurity researchers in the country. We have a report that we produced for IZ about the 34 cybersecurity public-private partnerships in the country. We have a, a report, uh, a document that is freely uh, available on the internet of all the cybersecurity courses offered across the country by all universities in the country. And we plan to update those reports to empower organizations to access this knowledge in the country. I'm going to skip this one. Trying to scale up uh, knowledge mobilization, maybe less relevant to you. We created scripts to scrap the internet on a daily basis to learn all about all the publications of relevance, scientific publications of relevance to us. So now, where are we going? I think I've got only uh, 10 minutes left. So where are we going um, for the next three years if we are uh, refunded? Well, there will be three drivers to what we do and four audiences. The three drivers, the first one is to uh, target our audiences a lot more. So, you know, there is no need for us now anymore to try to work in terms of, you know, to support the big financial institutions. They're spending massive amounts of money, same for the critical infrastructure, so they don't need necessarily our, our help. They know how to do it, they know who to contact in academia, they're funding research chairs, so there is, you know, we should focus on the organizations and the segments that don't have this capacity. So that includes SMEs. You know, we think that SMEs are not very well served in, in our country, and we'd like to work a lot more for them to deliver a lot more usable cybersecurity products that wouldn't cost a lot of money, that would give them the evidence produced in academia. Law enforcement, we have a full session tomorrow. We think that law enforcement doesn't get the resources that uh, intelligence agencies or defense agencies are getting. So how can we help law enforcement with research findings to help them understand how to best uh, 
maximize their resources for optimal impact. Um, HQP is the students. Everyone agrees that we'll need a massive number of students uh, to um, fill all the jobs in cybersecurity. You know, how can we help uh, make students better aware of those opportunities and uh, give them this kind of cross-disciplinary type of not training, but awareness. Uh, yes, it's great to have a computer science degree, but what about you know, the behavioral dimension of cybersecurity? Have you thought about that? And finally, the general public. There is still a lot of very contradictory advice on what you should do to be cyber safe online. So we'd like also to bring more solid advice to the general public in terms of cybersecurity. Of course, you know, if we get renewed in terms of funding, our funding is not going to increase unless someone here wants to make a multi-million dollar donation today. So our funding is going to remain the same. So we need to co-produce everything we do with other organizations to um, ensure that we really reach uh, the largest possible audience. So we need to find ways to co-produce and to scale what we're doing without increasing our manpower and our human resources. And we need also to empower local communities. Masara, you saw your picture now? You missed it? You were on the screen a few minutes ago. Um, so we need to empower local communities, local cybersecurity communities. What we do is delivered at the national level, but there are also groups in Fredericton, in Montreal, in Ottawa, in Toronto, who could be doing the same locally, and we'd like to give them the tools to do it, the tools that we've developed for the past four years. So a few examples, the workshops. In the second cycle of funding, we plan to have only one national workshop a year, and then to support local workshops in cities across the country. And we will be co-branding co the workshops in other places. So that's an example of uh, uh, such an exercise that took place in Montreal, the GoSec conference, so sponsored by GoSecure, attracting about 550 uh, attendees. Um, they gave us one track in the conference, and this track was filled by academics and partners of the network, and that gave a very different flavor to the conference. And everyone enjoyed that diversity of uh, views. So we plan to do a lot more of that, to engage with Cyber New Brunswick, with other initiatives across the country to make sure that there is a serene risk uh, presence at uh, events. There is no need that now for us to add another event to what's already a very crowded landscape. We want to make our uh, knowledge mobilization platform scalable, so we want to use existing tools like Twitter and LinkedIn and YouTube, and we want to automate that to make sure that we reach much bigger audience than the one that we're reaching at the moment. We want to also design new tools that will customize the ability of people to access those research summaries. So if you're only interested in botnets, well, we want to create a tool that will be able to filter the research summaries and you'll be able to create yourself a digest that suits your specific needs. So something that's customized for your organization, whether it's a public or a private organization. We also want to do uh, to help and support existing or new cyber uh, security challenges for our uh, professional development activities. We'll keep on doing probably uh, more traditional uh, lectures and uh, workshops, but we also want to do something that's more hands-on. Uh, I, I dare not use the term gamified, but something that's more engaging and interactive for a younger crowd. Um, the uh, public awareness and behavioral change campaigns, we want to do a lot more of them as well. We want to work with universities, law enforcement, uh, and our international partners to be able to deliver that in partnership with other awareness campaigns and try to avoid having to reinvent the wheel every single time. So we want to really create partnerships uh, that can benefit from the knowledge and the contents that we've produced. We also want to do something in collaboration with all those professional associations that um, you saw the logo of on the previous slide to create a, a, a cybersecurity technology roadmap. We have no idea at the moment in our country where we should be investing our R&D dollars in terms of cybersecurity. Where are the opportunities for startups and Canadian companies? Where do we have an edge 
on the global stage that we could re really exploiting. So we'd like to organize a number of um, um, events where we would be able to get feedback and actually to get industry and government to inform and to kind of chart this cybersecurity roadmap. And finally, and I'm going to close on of that, we're also starting to think about the sustainability of the network because when our funding expires in three years, uh, there is no renewal possible for this source of funding. So we are creating templates for local communities to be able to uh, replicate what we're doing. We will also support and build up local communities to do knowledge mobilization in cities instead of only one single national network. And we're also exploring uh, alternative sources of funding uh, to try to ensure that the network keeps on uh, thriving after our funding expires in, in three years. So this gives you a, a general overview of what we've been up to for the past four years, what we are hoping to achieve in the next three years. And as always, the members and the attendees of the workshops are the core uh, pillars of what we're doing and our success. So if you have ideas, if you have suggestions, if you have uh, criticisms that would help us improve our products, please make sure you come and see us or you reach us uh, through email or by phone uh, to let us know because that's our community, our network that's together uh, through collective action is going to be able to kind of um, address this uh, global uh, challenge. So thank you very much for your attention and your support and your energy. Thank you.